Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to have a look at the VR changes that are coming in for not just ground, but aviation and fleet. I'm going to stick them all in one video because uh, they all follow pretty general themes and therefore it's just time to have a look at all of them. So we'll cover ground, aviation and naval stuff all in this. I'll make sure to leave timestamps so we can kind of see them all and go from there. The main uh, thrust of this is uh, the roadmap stuff. So um, basically, in the roadmap, Gajin talks about the idea of spreading out the higher BRs of ground, mainly uh, because of technological differences. And uh, since the higher echelons were decompressed, now uh, the uh, even slightly less higher echelons also now get decompressed, which means that stuff like 606367 are able to actually have a little bit of a breather uh, compared to many other little areas. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at the general changes and then also at the same time highlight a few which kind of are surprising. So one of the keynotes for matchmaking that Skagin have talked about many times now uh, with the roadmap is improving the balance of vehicles around era-breaking battle ratings and the transition from homogeneous steel armor and full caliber projectile to APDS, ATGMs, weapon stabilizers and similar systems by changing the BR of certain vehicles, reduction of research and purchase costs of rank 6 and 7 aircraft too. They actually put that twice for some reason in the, uh, in the roadmap, but nobody seemed to notice. But uh, these are specifically the BR changes which are headed towards them. Basically, uh, if you have a look at their reasoning, uh, which was posted by Stoner, in order to adjust and improve balance in battles, we have made a planned change of battle ratings for fleet and aviation, and in ground vehicles, we focused on a specific BR range from 70 to 97. Vehicles that are from the time when a qualitative transition has been made from one means and types of defense to another, more advanced ones. For example, uh, ground vehicles abandoned homogeneous armor in favor of the active use of dynamic protection and with that combined multi-defense armor. Regular kinetic ammunition has been replaced by heat FS, fin stabilized and guided weaponry. Finally, laser rangefinders, stabilizers and thermal images have appeared too. Thanks to these changes, earlier vehicles based on the principles of simple armor and simple sights will become even less common with vehicles more relevant to dynamic protection and advanced fire control systems. Intersections will remain, of course, as they were in, rea in reality, but this is another step towards reducing them. So, basically, BRD compression. And also what you can tell from all of those statements is this is not necessarily stats based. Instead, this is just following the, the standard trend that we've seen many times, which is the fact that they've decompressed certain parts of the game. Now it's time to decompress others. I compare this to the research changes that they're going to bring in for rank six and seven aviation. Now that they've brought in rank eight aviation, basically you get a reduction. So it's a bit easier to get to the top because they've added a larger total of RPNS cell that's required. Required. So therefore, reducing the other ones is, you know, pretty standard form. The only issue is it comes six months or more after the introduction of the rank A vehicles, which is also standard practice. So when we have a look at a lot of these things, it is kind of interesting to see that, uh, or at least to me, when I when I look at a lot of these factors or when I look at a lot of these changes, you can definitely tell that this is not necessarily stats based. Instead, it is based around those factors. And that the reason for this is because there are just some vehicles that are completely missing from this area. So, for example, um, the BTR ATA. So the BTR ATA is going up to 7.3. And uh, it's going up with the IS-6 uh, 273 as well. So the BTR-80A, the reason why it's so strong is not because of uh, the standard vehicle stats itself. You know, it's pretty quick, but it's, you know, it's an active scout and that's pretty much it. And um, with its gun, you can't really do too much apart from if it actually gets up the yard and you run into a lot of live vehicles. The BTR-80 works really well because it's in that 7-0 lineup, which is the IS-3, the T-44-100, 
and the IS-6. Now the IS-6 goes up with the BTR-80A, now that lineup is broken and won't be as strong. So generally, when I have a look at something like the BTR-80A, I don't think it's as useful as something like the T-44-100 for that lineup. So the fact that it's going up is really surprising. One of the themes is they are chucking up a lot of light vehicles, even to a ridiculous point. So the ZTS-63 is going up to 77, for example, along with a lot of its compatriots, which is just nuts uh, for the vehicle because it's a horrific vehicle. And <laughs> the reason why it's going up is just because of, once again, this idea that modernized weaponry shouldn't go against Second World War stuff, which is completely fine. You know, if, if they want to go along that idea, they could do so, especially after a lot of the AT gem changes that they made, which have pretty much nuked a lot of AT gem launches. Along with most of these BRD compressing changes, there are a few which do stand out because they're jumping two BR brackets instead of one. The vast majority of light tanks between 70 and 97 are increasing. The vast majority of MBTs, or medium tanks, are going up by one BR bracket. A few are going up by a few. So the T-54-1949, for example, is going up to 80 from 73. They're also increasing its reload, uh, sorry, decreasing its reload rate and giving it a heat shell. So basically bringing it back to what it used to be. Uh, and then also at the same time, the Leopard 1 is another vehicle which is going straight from 73 to 80. So it looks like finally that area of uh, Germany has been fixed. Uh, you know, uh, one of the issues with the, uh, the, the Leopard 1 going down to 73 was to try and support the M48 that was there, and I've got to say for the longest time, it was actually incredibly good at supporting that uh, little area. And uh, one of the things that's also uh, missing from this, at least I haven't found them, is the M48s. The M48s are not moving at all when it comes to these BR brackets. Some M60s are, but not many of them. Uh, so those seem to have just completely been missed, apart from some Magax here and there. So you'll still have now that island at 7.3, because they're also moving up the Marder, because as I said, they're moving up all of the light tanks for um, for the good old... Uh, for the good old tech trees. Then the vast majority of these changes I think is generally fine. The T-54s are all getting a reload uh, buff along with everything that's even close to a T-54. So for example, the ZTZ-59A, then the Type 59, and then also we have the uh, Tyrann 4 and uh, the uh, T-55A and the Type 69-2A. So all of those on that type of platform. At the same time, the Object 435, T-55AM1, and also BMP2, which all have gone up to 87 now, have uh, reload buffs. Same with the T-62 number 545, the T-55M for Finland, and also the T-69-2G. One of the things about these vehicles, well, the T-62M also got a reload buff. Uh, so one of the interesting things about a lot of these uh, vehicles, like the T-55, T-54 platform, they do have a lot of these kind of newer technologies, I suppose. But one of the major issues they have is they usually have some kind of downside, like relying heavily on their armor and a lot of things just not caring about their armor. And it can cause a bit of a problem. The VFM-5 also goes up to 9.7, uh, which is a bit rude, uh, to be honest, just because they gave it a nice round. And also stuff like the XM-8 and also the M1128 Wolfpack is going up too. Uh, the Wolfpack, they're actually giving the M900, so that thing will be nuts, as the standard tech tree one is. And also the ZLT-11, actually, no, sorry, the XM-8 gets the M774 going up to 9.7. And also, uh, there is some vehicles which have got kind of sideways buffs. So, of course, the Puma going up in BR to 10 -0, they have to remove the HEIT rounds from its default belt because that thing definitely needs a buff, even though it's still insanely strong at its level. The VCC 8030 also has it removed, and the CV 9030 Finn has it removed as well, which I think is more of a good shout compared to pretty much 
all of the other ones. So you have some vehicles which are going up by two BR brackets, most going up by one, and a few balance changes with reloads and changing of rounds across the place. One of the startling things to me is you have finally a bit of separation. So for example, the Bradley is going up in BR, uh, which is a really, really positive one, right? Those light tanks, which you kind of go into when you start with, are really uh, pretty powerful uh, in the post-Second World War period. But stuff like the Warrior is not going up, uh, even though it has Gen 2 thermals, even though it has the Milan, which they nerfed. So we're going to have to see how that does. But yeah, so you now have separation between those vehicles. And also the thing that's missing from the list, which, you know, if, if we're doing a whole, oh, everything matters about technology thing, which isn't the case, of course, one of the things that's missing is the M113s. They're just not here. You know, the tow machines, which are absolutely terrible and really horrific to play. Well, guess what? They're just not in the list. So it isn't all about... Um, technology because if it was those things would have gone up because they're AT gem carriers those things are fundamentally useless in the game compared to everything else that's around them the fact that the Bradley or even the Warrior still after these changes is the same BR as the M113A1 tows is ridiculous those vehicles are so bad and you've got to somehow get them to work. And now, with the AT gem changes, they're even worse. So, absolutely fantastic. At the same time, stuff like the M41D also hasn't changed in BR. So, vehicles like that will get a buff technically from this um, because of those changes. Which is, you know, once again positive. And the main thing is this takes a lot of pressure off that 6367 area. So, therefore, hopefully... Those vehicles can be played more like they're supposed to be instead of mobility being the meta. Maybe we can go back to a little bit of an armor meta, but not a huge one since that would kind of screw over 5760. 5.3 is still insanely strong for Germany, by the way. Hammer, they're massively dominating it and hopefully with some BR changes that can be solved as well. For air, we're going to focus on the realistic stuff, because that's obviously generally where I play. We start off with the F-104J, uh, which is going down to 10-3. This is just because it doesn't have countermeasures. That's literally it. The F-104J is going to be in a similar position as the A and the C, where it'll eventually find a BR where it can't be killed, and also will be able to dominate matches. But yeah, this change isn't a surprise. Uh, the main issue with the F-104J and many of these vehicles that you'll see is just it doesn't have countermeasures and they decided to put a lot of vehicles in between 10.0 and 11.0 now after decompression which just have crazy missiles. So therefore the F-104J cannot use its speed as a uh, kind of defensive factor because they're able to catch it or at least get close to it and then zoomy zoomy missile go bang. No surprise here. Um, that this is happening. The same thing for the F-80E for France. This one might be a little bit of a worry um, because the F-80E uh, for France actually has magic missiles. Uh, so magic missiles at 10.0 uh, seems pretty strong. Um, and as somebody who, uh, you know, spaded out the Mirage 3C, uh, 3C and also Mirage 3E and Mirage 5F uh, when they had you know, uh, slightly, you know, similar loadouts, uh, if not slightly better ones, at a slightly higher BR. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, I do on, I do also think it's an underline vehicle. I'm not sure about that. I should probably check that. But that also hurts it quite a lot. Um, hopefully, with the research changes that they're bringing in, vehicles like that will see a bit more play. The Reggiani 2005 is going up. No surprise. Um, I've I've said for many years that the Italian props are just insane. Um, the Reggiani 2005 is one of the higher ones, which pretty much was controlled because of its repair cost. Same with stuff like the G56. These vehicles are very good um, at what they do. It's it's as simple as that, and they're incredibly fun to fly. So to see any of them go up ever is no surprise at all to me. It doesn't really have a problem with it, as long as, of course, you manage the engine stuff, and they all just feel really nice to fly and have really good guns to back it up. 
The TU-2S44 is going down to 5.3, not just for the USSR, but also for China. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with this. Uh, the TU-2s uh, in general are very powerful in ground, but they do require air superiority. But if you do get air superiority, you end up with just three kills without even thinking because of the bomb loads. Um, the major issue is in stuff like Air Realistic and Air Arcade. They don't really fit the meta. They're more like uh, in-between vehicles, as I like to call them. They don't have enough bomb load to have a massive impact on the game, and they also can't dogfight enough to have an impact there. So you kind of have to use them in this weird multi-role setup, which just doesn't work for most vehicles. So for me, uh, seeing this go down, this only means that that 5-3 ground lineups uh, get a bit stronger. I'll still run it for China at 5.7 because 5.7 is a brilliant BR for China and I even run the P51K and even like the IL-10 there. The Sea Fury FB-11 is going up to 5.7. Um, kind of surprised by this. Uh, the the Sea Fury is not a bad vehicle but the in the uh, British tech tree if you have a look at all the other 5.7s they're so much better than it. The Sea Fury is just a fat Tempest Mark II, just like how the Sea Fire is just a fat Spitfire. So the question is, if they're at similar, if not the same BRs, why bother playing them? The Tempest Mark V is up there, and that one feels so much better to fly than the Sea Fury, and also doesn't have any of the power issues that the vehicle has. The Sea Fury is pretty much just dedicated to re uh, air realistic as well. Uh, it can't really play ground, not really play naval, so it's just in an odd place. I don't know or agree really with this change. The P-59 though going up, that is long overdue. So the funny thing about the P-59 is it's dominant not just in air, but also in ground and even technically naval, because it's uh, one of the best dogfighters for its BR, because of its thrust ratios. One of the favorite things that happened when the P-59 came out, because I remember grinding it out, and then I remember, like, um, I remember doing a bunch of aerialistic matches in it. I would end up with four, five, or six kills, and still lose matches. That, that was the meta back then for the P-59. I don't know what was going on with American teams. It still happens this day in that BR bracket, by the way, where you can just end up with like, you know, five or six kills and then still lose, especially with the extended amount of uh, things that are around. So yeah, seeing it go up is not a surprise. It should have gone up a long time ago. It's an incredibly powerful vehicle and also not available for everybody. So therefore it's limited and that kind of sucks. Hopefully they bring it back at some point. The G5N1 goes down, once again, has bomb load issues, no surprise here. The B25J30s uh, for USSR and China, and also B25J20 uh, is going down. This is because people use it to bot, and uh, once again, it has a terrible bomb load compared to many other things. But yeah, these the B25s, if you don't know, they're one of the sets of vehicles that a lot of people script with. So they use them in a realistic, they go bomb a base, and then they die, um, whether to an airfield or just randomly. So those are those. The reason why that's happening is literally because of bots. The ME410 B2U4, like the, nothing has actually happened in that BR bracket that's changed. It's just that. It's the fact that they use for scripts now instead of naval vehicles. The ME410 B2U4 is going down. No surprise, once again. It's just another twin-engine vehicle that has uh, not really ever had a place in the game, and a lot of the ME410s, uh, specifically uh, ones which, you know, have the 50mm, they can be pretty useful in uh, ground forces, but only if you run HE and only if you go after open top stuff, because you can actually overpressure stuff with one hit. So it's super satisfying to do it, but also very limited in its capabilities. It also, with like the the 50 millimeter, limits uh, a lot of other vehicle, or a lot of your use in stuff like aerialistic, where kind of like the Key 109, you kind of just sat there and wondering what you're going to do with it. The Morco Moran also goes up. I disagree with this. I really don't like how the Morco Moran flies. It flies like a bus, and uh, I'm not a huge fan of uh, buses. It, it just... 
The engine is not powerful enough for the airframe, which means that it pushes you around at a bad level compared to a lot of other vehicles that are much lighter and are able to push themselves about. The Moko Moran does have good weaponry, but that doesn't make up for the fact that it has uh, access to a weak engine. China has also got a bunch of helicopter changes, so the Z9W, Z9WA, Z19, and Z19E are all going up in BR. The only thing I've really ever heard about the Chinese helicopters is they have really good anti-CAS or anti-helicopter capabilities, meaning that a lot of people will use them to basically just sit in their helipads, donk people as they come out, and then <laughs> kind of just do that. Their missiles, or their ATGMs in general, also are pretty good, um, the starter heli has actually been super fun to play, so I'm sure the later helis are similar to that, and not too surprising to see them go up, especially after what a lot of people have said with their, uh, with their anti-air capabilities. Also, uh, it just goes along with all the ground changes, so you should basically be able to run them with the majority of the same lineup, so it won't really make a difference. In Naval, we're going to have a look at Arcade. Uh, the major reason for this is because that's the one that I play. And they're basically changing a ton of different vehicles for Britain and also the Type K7 <laughs> number 4. So the HMS Kent goes down. Um, a lot of those cruisers around those BRs for uh, Britain make absolutely no sense. But uh, the Kent should decrease. Uh, the Invincible, the Dreadnought and also the Colossus are all going down in BR. Um, the Dreadnought used to be insanely expensive, uh, but nowadays, uh, with the different battleships that you have access to, of course, it's nowhere near um, its capabilities. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. Uh, like, uh, we're basically putting these um, pretty large ships in a BR range that's more uh, designed for cruisers, which have uh, pretty rapid fire. So I wonder if it'll make a difference uh, when it comes to the general playstyle. But I think overall, they're pretty good changes. Then you got the Type K7 number four, which is an absolutely awful machine um, because it has access to just a really bad set of weaponry. And uh, the problem with this vehicle is exactly the same problem that we talked about before uh, with a lot of these other vehicles where um, because it was used in that battle pass, that sub chaser battle pass, a lot of people grounded out and then pretty much all of those sub chasers went up in BR. This thing is just going up again because of its 40 millimeters. Like literally that's pretty much all this has. The only reason it's going up is because it has two rapid fire 40 millimeter guns and that weaponry is fine if you can just keep it firing but also at the same time it's at the front of the boat it's very easy to take out and then it gets annihilated and this is just once again showing how battle pass stuff does affect <laughs> these br changes because this vehicle and its compatriot its brother stayed at the same brs for years and then now after you know the battle pass and then also after other stuff uh, now they just go up again it's just crazy so yeah it's <laughs> it's amazing how this goes but that is all the BR changes uh, that they're coming in. If you want to have your say, make sure to do so when it comes to the forums and also in the comments of the video. I'll see you next time. Have a good day. Peace be with you. I'd just like to thank Millie Draper, Juan the Panda, Nick R. Kupila, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie B. Young, Peter Grayling, Jerry Provolt, Bereen, Alan Hacker, Sem Arslan, Uncle Bean, Derek R, and Lafouche for supporting the channel.